What's going on, folks? It's Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Before we get started, I just wanted to remind you guys we are doing a giveaway once we hit 4.5K subscribers, which is pretty soon. Um, so for those of you that are interested, be sure to check out the video Matt put up yesterday. Um, that would be the 27th of January um, to figure out how you, can, how you can be involved, how you can help, and how you can win the $50 in stock trades or Amazon gift card that we're giving away. And now, without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna talk about my top 10 recent artists, mostly gonna talk about their 2019 work. So fairly recent, this is not by all, by any means a top 10 of all time. And honestly, even the ranking here is very difficult for me to do. It's tough for me to rank who my favorite artists are because I, I, I like the pros of each one, you know, it's tough. It's a very tough decision to make, but uh, I did the best I could, guys. Let me know what you think at the end of the video. Be sure to like, subscribe the video, and uh, check out that giveaway video, guys. Let's get into it. At number 10, Joshua Kassara, X-Force. This is, of course, the X-Force that came with the Dawn of X, thanks to Jonathan Hickman. Um, so Joshua Kassara is an artist that I had not heard of before this series, and um, I was taken aback by how beautiful and frightening his artwork was. What's great about it is, um, you know, and a large part of this is in thanks to the colors. What's really cool about it is the the darkness and that's the, the sort of grittiness that comes with the artwork. Um, the lines are very, um, you know, they're, they're crisp, but they're also kind of gritty at the same time. It's a very, very, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but um, it really suits the tone of what X-Force is. And of course, there are these these great widescreen moments where, you know, you, you have all these different expressions going on on people's faces. There's craziness happening. And uh, the way Kassara is able to draw these characters and their actions and their movements in these small, subtle moments is uh, really impressive, really impressive. And it, it really blew me away. He draws some of my favorite Wolverine you know, really short, bulky, ferocious, intense uh, Wolverine that I, I really enjoy. Looking badass, super jacked, all that stuff. You know, it's it, it's really great. It definitely suits the tone of X Force, and like I said, the thanks in, in due part to the color that you get that darkness, that gritty feel of X Force. You know, the 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 sort of darker team um, of the X the X Men in general. Of course, you also do get these amazing splash pages with this fantastic artwork. Press. Um, number nine for me is Rob Guillory. So creator own series, Farmhand. I, I did a little video about this. I love Rob's work on Chew as well. He's very vibrant, very exciting, very stylized. He's got this cartoon feeling that, you know, can bring you in, really make you feel like you're part of the story, make you feel like you're ingrained in it. It makes it, I don't know, it just it, it just makes me feel warm inside when I look at his artwork. It's, you know, like a lot of cartoons we grow up we grew up watching and experiencing and they're just sort of all melded into this amazing uh, cartoon happening on the pages in front of you. The colors are stunning uh, and they definitely complement his work and make that cartoony vibe really pop forward. He's able to do these huge grand two page spreads uh, with a lot going on in them. You know, his action sequences are ridiculous and fast paced and furious and, uh, and ex greatly exaggerated again, just following this this fun theme uh, of, of what comic books, you know, uh, can be. And it's it's one of the reasons why I like his style so much. It worked incredibly in Chew and it works even better in Farmhand uh, because that is his baby from start to finish. Of course, he gets very weird. What's great about Rob's work is in the background, you know, on the comic books, you'll see characters holding. There's always something funny happening. There's always something uh, funny written somewhere. It's he, he loves these Easter eggs. And of course... His mind is a weird thing, and his stories are a weird thing too, and it it naturally lends to that. But he doesn't stop there. He's not just a you know a cool cartoony artist. He's able to draw these horrific, grotesque monsters and incredible action scenes with them. I highly suggest you guys check out Farmhand, check out Chew as well. Uh, both well, both drawn by Rob Gilroy. He is writing Farmhand as well. Check it out. Number eight, R. B. Silva worked on Powers of X. Um, which isn't that many issues granted, but they were fairly long issues and there was a lot of stuff going on within the issues. And man, R.B. Silva's artwork really popped out at me. Um, his action sequences were fast and furious. You know, they've got that cool blurring effect going on. Um, you know, his pencil work is is pretty damn clean, although not 
as detailed as some artists I'd like. His facial expressions are incredible. These small, like this small moment, um, this exchange, you know, it, there's so much captured in the facial expressions. And uh, R.B. Silva did an incredible job. And, and he, he, he does that, you know, throughout the comics. Um, and it's great seeing, you know, Magneto uh, having a, a lot of expression in his face. And I can't, I, I, for, that's a crucial part of any comic book, right? He's getting facial expressions, which you know, I'll probably mention a lot throughout this list. But, you know, aside from that, you've also got the time jumping that Hick Hickman does, and you get to see R.B. Silva sort of develop the, the, this future um, Earth and mutantdom, um, you know, and, and draw these Seraphim characters. It's really cool, gets really crazy. Of course, he's great at drawing those widescreen action shots of characters. In my opinion, when I think of, X-Men in the modern day, R.B. Silva is the artist that comes to mind for me. Um, and, and again, I don't read too much X-Men, but he just nailed, um, for some reason, it, it, for me, it just felt like uh, a great uh, match, R.B. Silva and the X-Men. But that might just be me. I don't know. Again, like I said, he got he had these great moments, Powers of X. He's doing Empire this year with Dan Slott and Al Ewing, so that should be very exciting from R.B. Silva. Next up, Jorge Jimenez. Justice League, of course, the Justice League written most recently by Scott Snyder, since this is a list of recent artists. Um, Jorge Jimenez was another artist that I hadn't really followed too much. You know, I'd, he'd done a few issues of, I think, uh, Action Comics, um, or maybe it was Superman, I don't remember. Um, Super Sons, of course, was incredible with him. And, um, you know, him drawing Kent, uh, John Kent, is sort of how I got introduced to him. But with the Sixth Dimension arc in the Justice League, um, you know, I, I designed a custom dust jacket for someone and I was flipping through all this artwork and wow, is it gorgeous, gorgeous. Ever since I looked through this six dimension arc, I am, I've become such a huge fan of Jorge Jimenez. His artwork is so exciting. It carries this energy that's like indescribable. You know, he, he pushes the limits of what, what is done in comics and, um, you know, what has already been done. He, He's an artist that you really need to keep your eye out on for sure. I'm very excited too, especially considering what he's going to be working on next. And that is going to be, of course, the Batman with James Tinney in the fourth. He's been getting excited, showing off all these images. Of course, we have, we've had a cover by him. Um, I believe it's for issue 91. I am so excited to see his Batman and the energy he brings to that title. Um, it'll be nice to see his artwork with a lot of, you know, darker colors a lot of shading um, because you know most of the stuff he's worked on has been fairly bright but jorge jimenez is a force to be reckoned with i can't wait to see what he does on batman might become one of my favorite batman artists but uh jorge jimenez justice league next up number six is dan mora having worked on once in future and klaus this year so dan mora i got introduced to through klaus the original series by uh, grant morrison and dan mora and I was stunned. Um, Dan Mora is, you know, again, facial expressions. Dan Mora is amazing at drawing facial expressions. Characters in general, you know, they look consistent throughout the entire storyline. You're never wondering what character might be what. Um, you know, sometimes it may get a little foggy. Um, his action sequences are great. The monsters he draws are fantastic in this series. Um, so the series is written by Kieran Gillen. It's uh, being published by Boom. It's a fantastic series. Um, and in a huge part, thanks to Dan Moore's uh, artwork, very crisp, very clean. They, you get to explore this this world that they're creating where, you know, it gets horrific. It gets uh, fast paced and action oriented. Um, it gets very emotional. It gets comedic. It gets suspenseful. And, you know, Dan Moore is hitting it every on every single note. And like I said, especially when it comes to the facial expressions and the characters interacting and having a conversation it's got to be exciting it's got to grab you as a reader you need to be able to read more than the words can tell you and dan moore is one hell of an artist to do that you know I, i've never been so interested in um in family members talking to each other and you know aside from that once in future of course he's been doing klaus one shots every year in december with grant morrison and those have just pushed the limit every single time phenomenal new ideas beautifully beautifully drawn by dan mora i'm so excited to see what he's coming what's coming up next in once in future this year and what will happen with klaus in december in 2020 next up number five is liam sharp the green lantern 
if you follow our channel a lot, um, you know I love Liam Sharp so much. Uh, talk about detail, detail, detail. I mean, every little asteroid, every little crack and line and crevice, it is insane uh, what Liam Sharp manages to do on a single page. Um, stunning, stunning work. He's been doing the Green Lantern with Grant Morrison uh, for the past year, and he's going to be doing it again this year in 2020. Um, you know, you get to see a variety of different characters, alien species, um, different kinds of architecture, um, different colors, thanks to different sun orientations, all of it. Liam Sharp is on top of every single detail. You know, with different stories, they're, they're taking a different artistic angle, um, different paneling, different angling. It's really incredible what Grant Morrison and especially Liam Sharp are doing to, to show their love for the Green Lantern as a character with so much history. Like I said, just incredible amounts of detail, really epic grand scale stuff, of course, to match Grant Morrison's epic grand scale ideas. You know, with different, wherever, if they're going into a different area, a different storyline, a different, you know, they're visiting a different world, you've got different paneling, you've got a, a different energy and a different flow to the um, the comic itself, the artwork. It's really incredible and it's a different level of storytelling. It's, you know, the, upon the level of like J.H. Williams the third is very well known for that incredible layouts, uh, ridiculously creative, and of course, really trying to channel the story that's being told and the emotion and the design of the story. And uh, Liam Sharp is clearly showing that he's up to that scale too uh, with a, a ridiculous, once again, amount of artwork. Green Lantern Season 2 coming soon. Number four, Joe. Joe Bennett, Immortal Hulk. Um, so... Joe Bennett, of course, Immortal Hulk is a series that a lot of people are talking about. It, um, you know, it's been one of the best series coming out of Marvel for the past couple of years. And that is, of course, in big part thanks to Joe Bennett, who has been a very consistent artist on the series. Um, what I love about Joe Bennett's artwork is it's getting away from sort of the, you know, you've got a, a whole bunch of variety of different Hulk artists that have been on the series. But Joe Bennett is so great at channeling that, that, uh, that Hulk monster feeling, uh, you know, and, and sort of bringing it back to those old monster style movies with some of the layouts, um, some of the shots that are done. It's really incredible, really detailed, really freaky to look at, um, you know, disturbing changes to characters and uh, that are incredibly captured in the artwork. Um, like I said, there's there, there's quite a bit of line work going on with Joe Bennett's art, and um, it really lends itself well to that horror theme um, and that sort of um, kind of a vague mi uh, mystique that's around the Hulk character with the series. Um, like I said, again, you've, if you've got a good artist, you've got to have good facial expressions. You've got to have keep a conversation interesting. And Joe Bennett does a great job of, with doing that, um, doing various camera angles, keep you interested in what's going on. But of course, like I said, it doesn't just stop there with the Hulk. You've got action. And uh, Joe, Joe Bennett is a, a phenomenal monster action artist. Um, he makes it creepy. He makes it violent. He makes it aggressive. Um, but whichever way it is, it's really good. I can't wait to see what him and Al Ewing bring to Immortal Hulk this year in 2020. I'll be, I'll be sure to keep my eye on whatever Joe Bennett does, though. That's for sure. Number three, Bilquis Evely worked on the dreaming this is this is an artist that i don't hear very much about she had uh, my first first time i was introduced to her was in uh was wonder woman with rebirth uh, she worked with uh, greg rucka um, i forget what issues it was but anyway she's working on the dreaming now and she has been with uh, simon spurrier which is you know their runs coming to an end at 20 which is fairly soon so um Anyway, let's not let's not let's not get sad about that. Belquis Evely is an incredible, incredible artist. You know, the the dreaming is a place where a lot of crazy stuff happens. Um, of course, it's the place where dreams happen, so anything can happen there. And you know, she does a again. We're talking about capturing the feeling of the book, and uh, Belquis Evely definitely does that. She's got a lot, a lot of detail, and she's doing what l most, in my opinion my favorite kind of artists do, and that's push the boundary on how you lay out a page. So I mentioned J.H. Williams III, I mentioned Liam Shark, Bill Kusevely is up there on that list too. These amazing one page, um, what looks like a spread, it just flows beautifully. Um, it tells multiple stories within a page. Uh, it's, it's just amazing, stunning work. It's great to see 
um, Dream again. It's great to see Lucian again. It's great to see Cain and Abel again. All those characters drawn with incredible dedication and love by Bilquis Evely. It has been uh, an absolute pleasure to read the Dreaming and Number two, Andrea Sorrentino worked on Gideon Falls and Joker Killer Smile. Um, so I don't know if Andrea Sorrentino sleeps um, or if he does anything aside from draw, but he's worked on a lot of stuff this year and uh, always, always impresses, never disappoints. Uh, Andrea Sorrentino, especially with Gideon Falls, is being really experimental. They're taking things, uh, him and Jeff Lemire are taking things to very weird places. And Andrea Sorrentino's artwork is doing a very fascinating and very um, interesting job sort of showing how weird how weird these these ideas, how weird Jeff Lemire's ideas are. Um, and I, I really wonder what he sort of, what, what the conversation is when they come up with some of these two page spreads and these one page splash pages, because it's, it's beautiful stuff. I've been a fan of Andrea Sorrentino since he, I saw, first saw his artwork on The Green Arrow with Jeff Lemire. I was very impressed with the, the paneling that he did. It was very different. And that's still been a consistent theme with his artwork in, in Gideon Falls and as well as in uh, Joker Killer Smile. Um, I will say his style doesn't change drastically from title to title uh, like, like other artists do, but um, you know, to match that, those titles. But I'm always impressed with Andrea Sorrentino because of his style and his imagination when it comes to you know, trying to express a story to you. Um, and again, keeping the theme going, right? With Jeff Lemire, something like Joker, Killer, Smile, you've got this sort of insanity. Um, you know, it's very bleak. It's very, it's very bland, um, but it's also very horrific, right? And, you know, with Joker, Killer, Smile, we get to see Andrea Sorrentino's facial expression power come in. Um, it's just great. It's just great. I, I truly love his artwork. I can't wait to see what happens in Joker, Killer, Smile 3. And lastly, number one, Mitch Gerard's Mr. Miracle. I know, I know this series has gotten more than enough praise. I understand, but it deserves it. It deserves it. Mitch Gerard's as an artist has gotten progressively more and more impressive. And it's tough for me to determine exactly what it is, but I think, you know, a large part of it has to do with, um, you know, his style is my favorite kind of style. That's sort of noir, gritty, um, sort of like a Michael Lark or a Sean Phillips style. Uh, and of course, you know, with these, with Tom King's story, he's got all these nine panel pages. So he's able to make a lot of small movements in the panels, um, you know, and add a lot more depth to these characters than we're usually used to in comic books you know jumping from one area to another one page to another with very little motion in between so you get a little more here and it adds a little more depth and a little more of a connection to the characters in my opinion of course the way they play with colors as well it has a great deal on it in shading um the detail he has though to little things like hair and you know facial markings facial expressions again are so powerful with Mitch Gerrads and the thing is he just keeps getting better and better with it and not only that but he's able to draw these you know sort of smaller scale but more like exciting fight scenes you know where there again you're getting more detail in between the movements right you're not just getting punch here punch there over you know three pages so it's it's interesting uh, to see how that works and then paired with the storyline as well there's something about the tom king mitch Gerrard's combo that for me is has been spot on from from since they started working together up until now and um Mitch Gerrard's with the angles, the shots he's doing, the different poses, um, what Tom King's making him do in the storylines. It's just so far out there from what other artists are doing. But um, yeah, Mitch Gerrard's is for sure my number one uh, artist of, you know, I guess I'll say 2019. Um, uh, recent times is really a better, a better version of that. But um, let me know what you guys thought, what your top 10 artists were, uh, are, and this is recent artists. I'm not, you know, I'm not discounting guys like George Perez and, and, you know, Jack Kirby and John Byrne. There's, there are a lot of artists that have made a huge impact on comics over the years, but as, as time goes along, they are unable to work on comic books. And so, um, the, give me, you know, a top 10 of your m more recent favorite artists, uh, that you've been reading, um, and enjoying their artwork and um yeah thank you guys very much for tuning in this is mike from the hardcover comic
Um, as always, I'm sorry for rambling, but I just love talking comics. Oh, well. Until next time, as always, you stay classy, Internet.